Welcome back to Maintenance Monday. Now today I'm going to explain how to remove the cassette and the freehub body on a Wahoo kicker train, meaning you can switch between Shimano, SRAM and Campagnolo as and when you require, depending on which type of bike you choose to use. First up, what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need the freehub body relevant to the cassette system that you want to install onto your kicker. Now for reference, the kicker comes equipped with a Shimano cassette installed and ready to go. So if you've got a Shimano equipped bike, perfect for you. But if you've got a SRAM equipped bike, like my latest new bike, then you're gonna to need to buy the relevant freehub body from Wahoo. This also comes with the relevant fixings that you need. And this is important because they are different to what we're gonna remove later on down the line. And the same principle applies for if you have Campagnolo on your bike, make sure you use all of the components that are included when you get your replacement freehub kit. Now also it's worth noting for the SRAM, the SRAM freehub body, you get this little washer here, which is used if you're using an XD cassette. Now, if you're using an XDR cassette, you don't need to use this additional washer. The tools that you're going to need are fairly simple and basic, and most of you should have them, hopefully, lying around in your garage workshop or maybe even your kitchen. You're going to need the tools relative to the cassette that's installed on the kicker already to remove it. So we've got a Shimano lock ring tool, we've got an adjustable spanner to hold the lock ring tool, and then also we've got our chain whip to hold the cassette in place. Now, in addition to that, you're also gonna need either a 16 mil spanner or a small adjustable spanner like this so that when we've got the cassette removed, we can undo the lock nut, which is holding the freehub body in place on the trainer. First step of the process is to remove this end cap that simply slides off the end of the kicker itself. Then we can get our lock ring tool, insert that in place here. See that fits in the Shimano cassette lock ring perfectly. We get our chain whip. This needs to go around, I find it's easier to put on the largest sprocket on the cassette. Then we can take our uh, adjustable spanner and then with a firm grip on each of the tools, push downwards to undo our cassette. Now bear in mind, it will be quite tight, so you might have a bit of a struggle. That's nice and loose. Take the adjustable spanner off of the lock ring tool. We should be able to undo that by hand and remove the lock ring off out of the way and set that to one side. With the lock ring out of the way, we can get the cassette and if we're careful and hold a bit of pressure to it, we should be able to remove it without dropping all of the different parts and sprockets. Now that we've got the cassette off, we can see we've got our Shimano freehub body installed and we can also see the end lock nut, which is holding that freehub body onto the trainer. This is where our adjustable spanner or 16 mil spanner comes in handy because there's two little flats on the end of this lock nut, which is where the tool fits and allows us to undo it. And then with a firm push, undo that. Once it's loosened off, we don't need to use the spanner. We can simply remove it with our fingers. Set that down to one side on your workbench, but make sure you keep it separate from the new settings and all the new components that you're gonna install onto the kicker. We can simply use our hands to then pull the freer body away from the trainer and set it to the side of the old one. And then left on the trainer itself is this little sleeve, which I can show you here, which acts as a spacer to sit between the bearings on the axle and then the free hub body itself. But you should be able to leave that in place and just reinstall, well not reinstall, install your new free hub body over the top of that. Once you've got your new free hub body to hand, so it could be Campagnolo or SRAM in this instance, it's worth applying a little bit of grease onto the pulls on the free hub body itself. This will help reduce any drag and wear on lots of different components and help it run nice and smooth and quiet. So you can use a little bit of grease around on each of the pulls. You don't need to put loads of grease on there. It's not like you're gonna be riding your trainer out in the winter conditions in the grit and the grind. So you can also put a little bit of grease on the threads of the free hub body itself so that when you're installing your new cassette, that uh, goes on nice and easy. So with a bit of grease on there, we can simply slide this over the axle of the trainer. Once it's up and butted up to the freer body or the body of the trainer itself, you can then rotate it counterclockwise until it slides in place. You do this to engage the pulls so they close it up and that'll allow the freer body to slide in as far as it needs to go. Now, the reason I said earlier about keeping the additional parts separate from what you've removed to the new parts that you're installing 
is to do mostly with this lock nut. So this is the Shimano one, which I've removed. And this is the SRAM one, which I'm going to install. And if I hold them together, you can see there's quite a difference in height between them. And as such, they're not compatible. So take your new one, install that over the top like so. And it's just a case of reversing the process that we did to remove it. So thread it all the way out by hand. Use our adjustable spanner or 16mm spanner. And that should hold that nice and securely. Don't over tighten it. Now that we've got that done and installed and in place, all we need to do is install our new cassette, depending on whether you're going to run SRAM or Campagnolo. And in this instance, I'm going to install my SRAM XDR cassette, which means I don't have to use that additional spacer on the back of our free hub. With your cassette tightened up securely, the last step of the process is to take this end cap and slide it over that locking nut and sit that in place. And as you can see here, I've got the kicker set up for a disc brake bike, so it's ready for a through axle. But if you're using a bike equipped with quick releases, then instead of sliding the disc brake through axle um, piece over the end, you just install one relative to the quick release system. And then you can just install your bike, quick run through the gears to make sure everything works as it should, which if you follow my instructions well, I'm sure it'll all be okay. And you should be ready to go for endless hours of indoor training and fun and games keeping warm and dry. Hope you found this maintenance video helpful. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments section down below what you think of indoor training and if you've ever changed the free up body on your kicker before.